Senator Dodd uh, has basically talked about the f reform and you're not too happy about it. There are a lot of things about the financial reform that you're unhappy about, mainly because there are pretty much no talks about breaking up these big banks. Right. And now the so-called government regulations are not really regulations at all. So tell me a little bit about well, it. I will absolutely tell you about it. It is uh, Groundhog Day in Washington. Mm -hmm. It's Groundhog Day because if you remember what happened about a year ago, going into November of last year, Senator Max Baucus took over the health reform process. The president stepped back and let Senator Baucus call the shots, write his draft. The lobbyists swarmed over the Senate. Uh, they got, they had their way with any number of senators and in, you know, at a sort of unseemly display, got the public option killed, got all sorts of other provisions taken out of the bill. And one of two things happened. Either the president wanted it to work out this way or he stepped or, or he lost control of the process. I suspect it's a little bit of both. We're seeing the same thing with financial reform. Exactly the same thing. Here we had Senator Dodd saying, I'm going to work with my Republican counterpart and we're going to come up with a compromise, bipartisan proposal that everybody will be happy with. Right. But his Republican partner backed out. So you negotiate against yourself. You give away 50% of what you want. Your partner backs out anyway. Then he starts the negotiation process, but you've already given up 50%. So by the time you're done, you give up 50% of that 50%. You have 25% of what you need. And our economy is in very real danger right now. Mm -hmm. So the Dodd, Dodd put out his bipartisan bill, and it is weak. It's not real reform. It's not what we need. Here are the, a few things that are wrong with it. Uh, now, I'm not saying everything is wrong with it. It has a few good things in it, but here are a couple things that are wrong with it. Consumer Financial Protection Agency, something that Obama has been speaking about and advocating for very strongly that would do every, everything to protect you and me mm -hmm. from the predators out there who have been running our economy. What would it do? It would prevent credit card companies from ripping you off. You know, they passed this bill, this credit card act, mm -hmm. to keep them from doing the horrible things they were doing. They're already making end runs around it. They were making end runs around it before it even became law. So it would pretend, protect people. Think about how low interest rates are right now, and they're charging 29% on credit cards to so many people. They're gaming these these FICO scores on your credit, and you then using that as an excuse to raise your rates even further. They were for a while sending misleading notices that looked like junk mail. You threw them away. Then because you didn't respond, they used that to raise your rates. So they're letting the credit card companies act like predators. They're letting the mortgage lenders act like predators. They've been doing all these things. The Consumer Financial Protection Agency would step in with an equal voice to protect you. What does the Dodd bill do? It downgrades that from an agency to a bureau. Right. And the piece I wrote today is what's next, an office, a department, a guy, a, a guy or gal with a laptop and a, a half-time secretary. You know, so they, they downgrade this critical thing, which is protecting the American consumer, and they put it in the, Dodd puts it in the Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve, there have been laws on the books since the 90s mm -hmm. requiring the Federal Reserve to do more to protect the consumers, and they haven't done a thing to protect the consumers. Ben Bernanke, who was just reappointed the head of the Federal Reserve, was asked what the goals were, what the mission of the Federal Reserve was, and he forgot that the, the Federal Reserve has two missions by law. Mm -hmm. One is to keep the financial system stable and interest rates sound, and the other is to work for full employment which is defined as no more than 4% employment. He forgot. He's never done anything to promote full employment, or not nearly enough, I should say. And when asked what, it, when he said what his mission was, he forgot the employment part. And, and nobody, no Federal Reserve chair in the last 15 years has done anything to carry out the, what by law they're supposed to do to protect the consumer. That's where Dodd, Dodd puts the consumer uh, financial protection function. So unhappy with that doesn't do enough to control hedge funds or some of this other risky behavior. We've got a complicated, cumbersome, crazy system now of four different agencies monitoring financial institutions. Dodd takes it down to three, but it's still cumbersome and crazy. There's a committee, there's a council that runs everything and decides if two agencies are in dispute. There's bureau bureaucratic procedure. There are too many steps, too many rules. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not, it's watered down. 
and, and instead of ha breaking up the banks that are too big to fail, it says that a council will, will look over them and monitor their behavior. Instead of implementing what the president po promised, which was a Volcker rule, so-called, that would pre prevent these institutions from gambling with their own money and, and, and threatening their own solvency, it, it says, you know, this is a good idea and you should study it and then eventually tell us how you plan to implement it. It's, it's health care reform all over again. It's weak. It's watered it, down. It really is health care reform all over again. It's very similar. It has a very similar nature. And, you know, Chris Dodd uh, has a quote that I want to read. And this quote angers me in a lot of ways. This is what he says. He says, the stakes are far too high and the American people have suffered far too greatly for us to fail in this effort. This legislation will not stop the next crisis from coming. <laughs> That's what he says. No legislation can, of course, but by creating a 21st century regulatory structure for our 21st century economy, we can equip coming generations with the tools to deal with the crisis and to avoid the kind of suffering we have seen in this country. So basically he's saying, like, yeah, this is a watered-down bill. This isn't really going to do anything, but maybe this is a stepping stone for future generations, and maybe they can find a way to improve on it and regulate our financial system in a better way so we don't right. have this economic collapse again. It's frustrating. And look, there's a school of thought that says right now you can't pass anything through Congress unless you got a Republicans to buy in on it, through the Senate in particular. Okay, let's say for a second that's true. Then what do you do if you're the Democratic Party? You make them vote. This is a point I've been making over and over. You don't do these backroom deals. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something shocking. Okay. I kind of agreed with that Fox News guy about the backroom deals. Mm -hmm. I don't like these backroom deals. I don't like the chairman of a committee coming out and saying, this is what I've decided I'm going to give. I want my senators, and I want every American to know, to have their senators stand up and stay where they stand, vote where they stand on these issues. I want my senators to, to show me with their vote whether or not they support a consumer financial protection agency. I think Boxer does. I'm not sure about Feinstein. I want to know. I think every American has it right. I want to know where my senators stand on too big yes. to fail. I think every American has that right. I think in a democracy, put it to an up or down vote. When you lose, that's when you compromise. Right. Not before. 